Hello, everyone. Pat Dana MMA back with another DWCS breakdown, episode 20 of my breakdowns, which I guess you can say is a milestone now because we also have something special for this episode with Torres Finney returning to face Abdella Arami in a middleweight bout on week eight. So very special episode because we have a bit of a interesting situation on our hands for sure. So we're going to get started with Torres Finney because I'm going to try to keep this quick because we've already seen him fight this season. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've watched him fight this season already so Forrest Finney's a three-time DWCS alumni he's 2-0 in DWCS already with wins over Yuri Panferov and Cam Rouston his second fight in six weeks he beat Rouston by UD on week two after that win he was given a hard no on a contract because it was a fairly dull performance but then after hearing that he was kind of screwed out on tough Dana changed his mind and let him come back and fight so that was pretty cool I guess and he just he's received a lot of love from the community and a lot of people feel bad for him you know 2-0 on dwcs and still hasn't got his shot so torres finney is 5'8 which is obviously ridiculously small for middleweight but he has a massive 76 inch reach for someone that's 5'8 so his length does provide protection for his his height his lack of height but he does still face some problems with it that we'll get into but finney is a very quick starter he just uses his strikes immediately to close distance and shoot he's just so strong and just loves to bulldoze through guys he has great takedowns a massive blast double and a beautiful just kind of leg grab single where he just kind of picks up the leg and just pulls the opponent down as he throws the right hand it's very very tricky and very sweet to watch so he has a lot of slams as well it's very very hard to watch a torres finney fight and not see him pick someone up and slam them at some point like he just picks guys up with ease the problem with finney though is he is a bit inactive on top we saw that in his last fight against cam rouston where sometimes he'll get on top and just be too inactive he does have some really hard ground and pound but he just refuses to use it at times for some reason and I think it's because of his control, his lack of control, I should say, because he does let guys get up way too often and doesn't have the best top pressure. Finney really does enjoy getting to the back on the ground, and he does have chokes that can finish the fight once he gets to the back, but he really, he likes to try to work to the back, but if he can't, he will just be content with staying in guard. On the feet, though, Finney does have a solid jab and a massive, massive overhand right. It is just a lights out kill shot. It is awesome to see him throw that overhand right we saw it in his fight with Tyson Jeffries two fights ago in between his DWCS bouts where he knocked Tyson Jeffries out with a knockout of the year candidate Finney also does have some decent combos when he does start to unleash on the feet his combos are quick and they're pretty powerful you just don't really see those a lot and he does have some good footwork but really no head movement to show for it and because there is no head movement there and he is so short Finney does get hit a lot at range and he just doesn't keep his hands up well at times he also gets caught in the clinch because he's just so so focused on kind of getting the fight to the floor that he isn't focused on defending any incoming strikes so he is susceptible and he has been wobbled before by Panfarov. but he had some really good recovery in that fight and he also has some solid cardio he's went three rounds before no problem and looked fine throughout it multiple times so i am not worried about finney's cardio for sure in this fight so moving on to abdella arami arami is from spain and he is a seven and one record he's also six feet tall so he'll have the four inch height advantage in this fight which it'll be hard not to against Torres Finney honestly last fight was in the PFL he won that fight by first round knockout but also hasn't fought in over a year and a half at this point Arami does just like to brawl recklessly that's what he wants to do in there he wants to lure you into a brawl and then just take your head off in that brawl he has some big power shots that you know include a lot of winging punches but for some reason, they look like they're thrown with really good technique. Arami also has some massive hooks. His step-in hooks are just devastating, and their death those punches are bite enders for him. His his left hook and his right hook both carry some serious power, and he also has some massive body shots with that left hook. He rips it to the body, and it is money, man. He really loves that left hook to the body, and it's very effective punch that will wear on opponents throughout a fight. Arami throws a lot of leg kicks with his front leg and his back leg. He's constantly targeting the lead leg of his opponent, trying to break them down with kicks, but defensively, he does leave some holes. He runs into strikes and can be caught while kicking. He can be caught if he misses one of those winging shots as well. He got caught bad by a spinning elbow in one of his fights when he missed a winging uppercut and it was a very bad look he doesn't have the best chin also in general but he does have some pretty good recovery 
And it does seem almost like when you watch the evolution of his career that he might have gotten worse, but I don't think he got worse. It was more out of shape. He's gotten out of shape, and now for this fight, he showed up in shape, which is the best thing he could have done. He took it seriously, it seems like, so that's great to see. In the grappling, Arami isn't the best at defending takedowns, but if he does defend the shot, he is good at reversing and getting his own offensive grappling in and taking down his opponent. He isn't the best in scrambles either. He loses some dominant positions in scrambles, that he probably shouldn't lose but he does have some really strong ground and pound and some decent clinch control but he makes some dumb mistakes in the clinch he also has some great elbows in the clinch his clinch elbows are pretty devastating and definitely to something to look out for in this fight the thing with arami is he usually does need that earlier finish i'd say or his fights can become more boring with a lot of clinching and just not not the most action there will be breaks in the action for some quick brawling but then it will be right back into the clinch so you never know with arami he doesn't really manage his cardio but it somehow holds up well and he does carry his power to the end of fights arami is just kind of a a brawler that wants to be on the feet and just take you out in a brawl for my prediction for this fight it's a very interesting fight because I could see this fight going a couple different ways. Uh, Arami could easily catch Finney on the feet early and knock him out, or not even early. It could be like in the start of the second round or something like that, or even start of the third. Like I said, he carries that power. So anytime they're on the feet, both of these guys are susceptible to knocking each other out. When it's on the ground, though, I do think Finney will have the advantage. I don't think Arami's submissions are that special. I think Finney will have the better submission game. I think he'll have the better wrestling for sure. And I think he'll just be stronger in there. And I think he'll be able to take Arami down. The thing is, it's very possible he gets caught on the feet because he has shown that he can before. It's interesting because I really, really could see Arami catching him on the feet in this fight and winning the fight by knockout. But I do think I still have to lean Torres Finney. And I'm actually going to lean Torres Finney to win probably by submission in this fight. I don't think Arami's grappling off his back is going to be good enough to keep up with Finney's top control and just over the course of the fight, I think he'll re really wear on Arami and eventually kind of wear him down to the point where he can get that submission. He did it against Yuri Panfarov late in the second round. I say he'll do, he'll do it similarly in this fight, late second round, maybe middle of the third round even. I think he will push for that finish, though, knowing it's Dana White Contender Series. My only worry in this fight for Finney is the fact that he fought six weeks ago, one, and didn't get signed because of a boring wrestling performance. He's probably not going to want to put on the same performance again. So if he comes out looking to swing on the feet, he could fall right into Rami's trap of wanting to brawl with his opponents and easily get caught early. So I picked Torres Finney to win this fight, but not as confidently as I would if he didn't just come off a six-week notice fight that he didn't get a contract on. That definitely changes things a bit for me and makes me a bit cautious in my pick of Torres Finney, but I am going to be picking Torres Finney's second round submission in this fight very cautiously, though. I hope everyone enjoyed episode 20 of my DWCS breakdowns. We're going to be having just one more for this week and I get it up very shortly because obviously don't have much time. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I hope you guys join me for the next video and next week's breakdowns. Thank you.